Here we are again at the last four stage of a Grand Slam tournament. Stay tuned for predictions for the women's semi-finals at Wimbledon. 128 players began in the draw at Wimbledon and only four of them remain in the women's singles. Two semi-finals, I'm here to break them down and give you some predictions. And we're starting with world number 15, Garbinier Muguruza against world number 87, Magdalena Rybarakova. Muguruza is the 14th seed and Rybarakova naturally non-seeded. Now, Muguruza was in the top 10 only a matter of weeks ago, but she didn't defend her French Open title last month, which saw her drop quite drastically down the rankings. So, feels like she should be ranked higher, but she did have a pretty appalling few months on the heels of her Paris victory last season, so there is time for Mukuruza to get some more ranking points, a lot more ranking points, in the coming weeks, but for now she is ranked outside the top 10. Rybarakova, meanwhile, has been a threatening player for years, but has been dogged by injury quite regularly. She's come back from another long layoff, so her ranking certainly doesn't do justice to her ability but it's still a shock to see her in the last four of a tournament of such prestige. Before Wimbledon, she entered two ITF events, which is the tier below WTA. She won both Ilkley and Surbiton, and she reached the semi-finals of the Aegon Open Nottingham, which is a WTA event. So maybe we should have seen this run coming, but a Grand Slam is pretty major and she really has done well to get this far. So let's take a look at Rybarakova's path so far in the Wimbledon main draw. At SW19, she's actually only beaten one top 20 player, but that was Karolina Pliskova, the new world number one and one of the title favorites at the beginning of the fortnight. That she came from a set down to do that and get that win makes it all the more important because it demonstrates mental resolve and belief. Prior to that second round win, she saw off a very different player, tricky Monica Niculescu in straight sets and after the win over Pliskova she didn't wilt against two notable unseeded players. And in her maiden quarter-final appearance where she faced Australian Open semi-finalist Coco Vandeweghe who had reached the stage before at Wimbledon, she never once looked nervous and held her ground as Vandeweghe frankly struggled to land a ball in the court. Meanwhile, Muguruza seems to have rediscovered her grass court game even as she lost to Ashley Barty in the Birmingham semi-finals. She seems to have found her aggression and the way she makes precise shots on the court again, and she has carried that form with her to London. She faced a former major semi-finalist in round two, a former premier mandatory finalist in round three, and a two-time Grand Slam champion in the quarters. But the only set she has lost so far came against top seed Angelique Kerber in round four. Despite an appalling season, Kerber actually played some vintage tennis in that match, but Mugurusa kept hanging on and then pounced on her opportunity to break at the end. And that was when she really started looking like a serious contender for her first Wimbledon title. In 2015, when she made that final run, she was playing a very aggressive game, really opening up the court with angles, generally just not looking intimidated, and we are seeing some more of that from Mikarutha this year. The forward movement is back, even when she's in a losing position. So all in all, given that she hasn't had a great season to date, Mikarutha has been looking pretty promising as she has progressed. On the other hand, Rybarakova is a player who could cause us some trouble because she's very consistent in long rallies, really good at the net, has great hands, great feel for the court, moves well, she has great timing and can throw in variation from the baseline. And as Muguruza keeps going for her shots and ball after ball keeps coming back in a variety of styles and different ways, that could really throw her and jolt her rhythm. And interestingly enough, the head-to-head -head seems to prove this as you can see here. Rybarakova actually thrashed Mikarutha in their last meeting, which happened to come on grass in Birmingham the year the Spaniard reached the Wimbledon final. She also beat her in a 2013 meeting on carpet, which is not used on the WTA tour anymore, but was another really fast surface. Muguruza has won both meetings on hard courts, but one was 14-12 in the third, so you get the idea that this is a matchup Rybarakova likes. However, it is worth noting that the two haven't met since Muguruza's career really took off. So the head-to-head -head is close, but you have to take into consideration things like the stage and the 
pressure of the moment. Ryberakova hasn't seemed fussed that much by the unfamiliarity of her situation so far, but a Grand Slam final being on the line is a pretty big thing, and Muguruza has been here before, so it's hard to think that that won't help her come Thursday. I just think that Muguruza will be more at ease with the occasion. Yes, Rybarakova does have the depth and the kind of looping forehand to give Muguruza trouble, but I'm just basing my prediction here on experience and on an, an aggressive player who is really intimidating and controlling when she's putting the ball where she wants it. The women's tour has now had 17 consecutive debut Grand Slam semi-finalists and those with a similar story to Rai Barakova's, for example Kirsten Flipkens in 2013, haven't made it beyond the final four and something just says to me that Rai Barakova's brilliant run will end here. So I'm going to predict Muguruza in straight sets but Rybarakova has the weapons, she is quietly lethal, and if Muguruza is forced backwards and is jolted off her rhythm, anything can happen. And the second semi-final, which is pretty tough to predict. World number seven, Johanna Conta, against world number 11, Venus Williams. Conta is seeded number six, and Williams is seeded number 10. In my previous video, which was the Wimbledon Q&A, if you haven't watched it, you can go and check it out now, somebody asked me about whether Conta had a real chance of winning this tournament. Answer is in full at the video, but part of what I said was after her win over Donna Vekic in the second round, that was when I thought Conta had a bigger shot at the title than I did originally at the beginning of the tournament because before the fortnight started I wasn't sure how Kamsa would cope with the home pressure, the raucous crowd that can be when a Brit is in a good situation. But Conta won that clash 10-8 in the decider, was down on serve several times and still dug deep to win through and that was what made me think that Conta is a more serious contender than I first believed and hey ho, she's in the semis. She has definitely backed up that win, firstly by thrashing in for Maria Sakari. She did look less convincing in fighting past Caroline Garcia in the fourth round, but her third set dominance against Simona Halep, a former Wimbledon semi-finalist, was a serious statement in the quarters after she pounced on a relent from the Romanian when she was up in the second set tiebreak. After Halep had let her chances go, Conta demonstrated how clean power tennis is generally going to hold the advantage over even the best of defence. And it might have helped that Conta had Halep's former coach win for set in her corner, never know what that little bit of knowledge might have done for her, whether knowledge of how Halep will handle the situation or what weapons she could throw at her. That one was unquestionably a close battle, but I am inclined to think that Venus Williams' clash with Yelena Ostapenko was of a higher quality, more risky and more lethal than the clash of Conta Halep, which was a very different style. It was a seriously encouraging win for Venus under the roof. Ostapenko was brimming with confidence, having won the French Open as a non-seeder. She was one set and a breakdown, and she still went for her shots and came back into it. She was going for broke, she was going for those corners, going for the lines but Venus absorbed the power in the rallies and it was generally her opponent who was breaking down when the exchange of shots was going quite long. Venus' serve was penetrating, when she was on the front foot she rarely relented, so it was all very very positive for the American who has now beaten three straight players born in the year 1997 and turns out that Venus debuted at Wimbledon in 1997 as well, so that kind of means nothing, but it's a nice little stat. Venus basically hasn't looked in trouble since her comeback victory over Qiang Wang in the second round when she wasn't even close to playing her best tennis. 
Um, her win over an inspired Elise Mertens in round one was very good and feels like a long time ago now. Really just was not pushed that much in the third and fourth rounds. She was just the better player, the more precise and aggressive player. And against Ostapenko, she combated some really pacey ground strokes with great control and great accuracy. This one is the hardest prediction, no question. And while I feel that Venus is the superior tennis player and seven major titles kind of have their say on that one, this has always been a pretty favourable matchup for Conta since it began at the end of 2015. They faced off five times. The first was in Wuhan. Venus came out on top in that meeting, but even then she had to save match points before before she was triumphant. She was pushed all the way and Conta has won both of their straight sets encounters. Venus has only ever been a winner in three sets. The 37 year old opened and closed dominantly in their last meeting, but clay and grass are two extremes of surfaces and they have never faced off on lawns before. Conta's consistency and placement regularly causes Venus issues and Venus shots, flat and slick, seem to land in Conta's strike zone. She just seems to love the pace. But all the same, you have to feel that the surface and the conditions making the ball travel lower, possibly a bit faster than hard courts, is going to favour Venus' game. We did see against Vekic that Conta struggles with a precise, lethal, flat, aggressive game. But at the same time, the crowd are going to be behind Conta, they're going to have a lot of energy, and so far the Brit has seemed to be rising on that. It's also worth remembering that last year, in her first appearance in the Wimbledon semis since 2009, Venus was pretty nervous against Angelique Kerber on centre court. She didn't play her best tennis at all, still made it close, but you have to wonder if she could have put a lid on those unforced errors, how different the outcome of that clash might have been. Venus is experienced, but if the crowd are madly behind Conta, which I expect them to be, you have to wonder how that will affect Venus mentally, whether that will raise some nerves. But last year she hadn't played on centre court before the last four, and this year she has had a match there. As long as there are no prolonged screams during match point, might not be an issue. For a while, my head was saying Conta and my heart was saying Venus, and now I'm not even really sure, but what I do know is that my head has been wrong a lot recently. There is also a part of me that thinks that Venus could well win the whole thing, even at the age of 37, even nine years after her last Grand Slam victory. So I'm going to call Venus in three sets. It's going to be close, I think. And then there is another part of me that wonders if Venus drops a set, will she hold it together? But she has only dropped one set in the tournament thus far. She's looked pretty much in control. Against Ostapenko, people threw doubts at her. Would Ostapenko's power expose Venus' movements? Would it put her on the back foot? Would Venus be able to keep up with that? But she actually proved that she can play some really good defensive tennis as well, even against such power. And I just feel that she keeps outdoing people's expectations. So I am going with Venus in three sets. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. This was filmed a little later than anticipated due to a certain Andy Murray versus Sam Query match, not going to lie. Do comment and let me know if you agree with my predictions, who you think is going to make the final, and if you're feeling daring, even let me know who your eventual champion is. I may or may not have a video up with men's semi-final predictions, depends how much time I have, but I am hopefully going to be doing some for the finals, which I didn't do for the French Open, so stay tuned. Please share the video Video if you enjoyed it, hit like, la di da di da, all that stuff. Subscribe if you haven't. Thank you for watching and keep enjoying the tennis. Mm -hmm.